My boyfriend's brother got me pregnant and now I don't know what to do. Three months ago, I started dating this new guy. He was so sweet and good looking. He took me to meet his very rich family right away. I walked into their beautiful house and his brother came right up to me and gave me a kiss. Now, let me say this. My boyfriend and his brother are almost exactly identical. They are both extremely good looking. They're both super muscular and really good shape. They both have long brown hair. They both have green eyes and tan skin. I mean, they are virtually perfect looking. Here's the difference. My boyfriend is so sweet, while his brother is more of a bad boy. He flirts with me in front of his whole family. And they all think it's hilarious, even my boyfriend. But here's the problem. The more I visited their house, the more I realized I was getting butterflies every time I saw his brother. And it's like his brother knew it. He would look deep into my eyes while we had conversations. He always looked like he was about to kiss me. One day, my mother-in-law decided to take me shopping at Bloomingdale's. She ended up buying me a $2,000 necklace. These people have money. When we got back to the mansion, I decided to put the necklace on. But as I was struggling, my boyfriend's brother decided to help me out. He slowly put the necklace on me. Then he started smelling my neck. Then he started kissing my neck. And then he started kissing me and we started making out. I couldn't help it. That's when my brother-in-law started kissing my neck. Then he made his way to my mouth and we started making out passionately. I physically couldn't stop myself from kissing him. After we kissed for a minute, we realized we were in the kitchen. Anybody could walk in on us. That's when he grabbed my hand and took me outside by the pool. He took me behind the pool house and then we just started kissing more. We were back there for like 20 minutes. Then my phone rings and it's my boyfriend, his brother. I push him off and I run back into the house. For the rest of the night, he just kept staring at me and I basically just tried to avoid his gaze. We didn't talk about the fact that we kissed at all for like two weeks. After the two weeks, I found myself alone in their house again. He comes up to me and starts trying to kiss me again. But this time I did have a little more self-control. He did something I never expected. He picked me up straight off the couch, threw me over his shoulder and took me to his bedroom. Then he started kissing me more. And again, I gave in. I couldn't help myself. It's like I physically can't stop myself from touching him. He kissed on his bed and then it happened. Uh, yep, we did it. It was amazing and magical, but I instantly felt remorse. Let me clear something up though. I am still very, very attracted to my boyfriend. I mean, if anything, I would have rather done it with him. But there's just something about his brother that I find intoxicating. I instantly felt sick to my stomach. I left his room and went back home. My boyfriend called me and asked me why I wasn't waiting for him at his house. I told him that I didn't feel sick so he came over and brought me chicken soup. I just did the dirty with his brother and he brought me chicken soup. You can imagine how guilty I felt. Two weeks later, I wasn't getting my period. So I took a test and it turns out I'm pregnant. And I'm pretty sure it's his brother's. I broke the news to him and his family that I'm pregnant and they're so happy. He proposed to me and we're engaged now. His brother, on the other hand, still tries to kiss me. But he just got a new girlfriend. We'll never tell the truth though. Or should I? Story time. Karma didn't do its job fast enough so I had to take matters into my own hands. So a little background information. My best friend Allie had just passed away in a car crash. And for some reason, these two girls, Jackie and Jayla, decided that they were going to talk shit on her all the time for no reason. Like, they had some weird, unhealthy obsession with her for no reason. Like, the one time they literally put me in a group chat just so that way I could see them talking shit about her. So, I told my best friends Christy and Megan about it, and we decided to come up with a plan to jump them. So, in the morning and after school, Jayla and Jackie would walk by my house to get to theirs. So obviously we weren't going to do it in the morning because nobody had the energy for that. But we got baseball bats and everything else. And we did end up using them. Like we ran up on them after school and we started to beat the sh out of them. I don't want this video to get taken down so use your imagination because it was pretty bad. And both of them ended up in the ER. One girl was in a coma for the week and the other one had a broken collarbone. They ended up pressing charges but my thing is this is a girl who can't defend herself so I would have done it any I'd never been to Prague, and the trip was last minute, so I had little time to prepare. My travel partner had dumped me in another country, and I was determined to make the best out of my trip by visiting a place I'd never been. Upon arrival at the train station, I visited the accommodation office and asked for a hostel not far from the center. In my early 20s, winging it was part of the fun. These days, I'm far less adventurous. The hostel they sent me to was a sprawling, crumbling, slate gray art deco building. The inside was probably beautiful at one time, but by the time I checked in, it was full of shabby, mismatched furniture and cheap stained carpet. Most of the light fixtures were broken, leaving everything but the lobby dark and gloomy. It smelled of standing water and dust. I found my room a double for $12 per night and made note of the fact that I had a roommate. She wasn't there, but on her side of the room, there was a suitcase, dress neatly folded across the back of the plastic chair, a scattering of makeup containers on the beat-up desk, and a stack of German fashion magazines on the bed. I spent the afternoon exploring 
exploring Old Town Square. I purchased some Czech crystal for my mom and painted eggs from a street vendor for myself. I also made reservations for a sunset dinner cruise for one. Oh, nice. I know, ideal. Wow. At around 6 p.m., I returned to my room to shower, change clothes, and unload my purchases. When I left my room about an hour later, there was no indication that my roommate had returned at any point during the day. After the cruise, I stopped at a tiny bar and had a glass of wine. I heard horror stories about the dangers of Prague, but I felt no more trepidation than I did in any other large city. Sure, the cobblestone streets, backlit gothic architecture, and winding alleys made me think of Jack the Ripper and Dracula, but in a good way. In a good way. I don't know how. What? It was nearly midnight when I returned to my hostel, so I was surprised to find that my roommate still hadn't returned. This wasn't uncommon, though. Backpackers are a fickle lot. She could have gone on a short overnight trip and just left her stuff behind, hooked up with a guy or girl, and was holed up at their place. So I was surprised, but not concerned. I took another shower before bed and was surprised to find that things in the room had changed upon my return. Her bed was neatly turned down, the magazines had moved to the nightstand, and the dress was gone. The strangest thing, though, was the addition of a pink, silky nightgown spread across my bed. Maybe she thought she still had the room to herself? I didn't see how. My shopping bags, clothes, and toiletries were in plain view. I gently moved the nightgown over to her bed and then settled in for the night, as I wrote in my journal. I assumed she was in the shower or somewhere nearby, so I expected her to return shortly. After about an hour, though, her side was still empty. I needed to use the restroom before I went to sleep, so I made one last trip down the hall. The building was unusually quiet. There weren't the regular sounds of chatty backpackers, the clinking of glasses, or music that would normally leak through the walls. There was... dot 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 nothing. I found myself practically tiptoeing back. My room was near the end of the hall and I couldn't shake the feeling that the corridor was darker than before. The few working lights were blinking and it reminded me of a fun house. A tightness began to fill my stomach and I subconsciously quickened my steps. There wasn't a soul behind me and I kept glancing over my back shoulder, convinced I'd see someone gaining momentum upon me. Oh my god, I don't like this. I was floored with relief as I flung open my door, but it didn't last long. Everything was exactly as I left it, except for the silky nightgown, which was now back on my bed. Ah! Sleep came in fits and starts. I left the lamp on for a while, still convinced my roommate would be right back, but the shadows it cast made the room even spookier. It was too dark with the light off. I'd finally slipped into a deep sleep when I suddenly heard the door open. A man stood in the (gasps) darkened doorway, the hall light behind him, showing just enough for me to see his contorted face. Stop. Quote, I did didn't mean to. He sobbed. You have to help me. Oh my god. Too confused and disoriented to be scared, I sat up, scrubbed my eyes, and reached for the lamp switch. But once the room was lit, I saw that the door was closed. There was no man. What is happening? I quickly bound off the bed and went for the door. It was locked. Nobody could have entered without a key. And the hallway? Empty. I passed the rest of the night fully clothed, sitting up in bed and with the light on. Yeah. Though I'd paid for two more nights, at 7 a.m. I gathered all of my stuff and went down to the reception desk to check out. By the way, I said to the 20-something receptionist, my roommate never returned. I'm a little concerned. She picked up the room key, looked at it hard, frowned, and then glanced at her computer. Quote, what room were you in again? When I repeated it to her, she looked back at her screen. Quote, Ma'am, that room's been empty for three weeks, and it's been cleaned since then. We only have six people in the whole building. The hostel has since been renovated and is now a luxury hotel. The end. There was no roommate. There was no roommate. So, like, whose stuff was that? Oh, my God. Am I the asshole for demanding my fiancé to stop teaching our kids bad manners? My fiancé, Lola. (laughs) My fiancé, Lola, and I have been together for five years, engaged for a little over a year, and we have twins, boy and girl, two and a half years old. Our wedding is in two months. Lola usually takes care of feeding the kids in the morning since I work early, and so I never noticed this until recently. I took a week vacation from work to just spend time at home with my kids and Lola and started to notice something that bothered me. Lola has... <laughs> Lola has been teaching our kids bad table manners and sees nothing wrong with it. I haven't noticed this before as they don't eat this type of food for lunch, dinner, snacks, or eat it all the time, so I guess I just missed it as I wasn't home or she fed them other things on the weekends. This morning, I was helping Lola make breakfast, and then I got the kids ready while she brought their food out for them. As they were getting ready to eat, I noticed they didn't have forks, spoons, so I told Lola I would get them, and she said there was no need. I watched instead as she gave the kids tortillas that she ripped into pieces, and they were using their bare hands to grab the food using the pieces of the tortilla. I asked her what she was doing, and she should be giving them utensils, but she seemed shocked that I was concerned and said that that's how they usually eat. I told her that she was teaching them bad manners and making them think it was okay to just grab food with their hands. They're two and a half. 
relax, chill out. She told me they do that anyway when they have chips or grapes or tacos and pizza and listed a bunch of other snacks and fast food you eat without utensils. But I pointed out that those things are usually made to be eaten quickly or on the road, like fast food, so utensils aren't needed. She said I was being offensive by calling her way of eating gross and saying it was having bad manners. But I do think it's gross to see someone grabbing at food with their bare hands like that. They're babies. Oh my god, god forbid you travel to other countries where their main utensil is their hand. She said she grew up eating like that and would always use tortillas to make things like eggs or meat, rice beans, and that it wasn't gross because she always made the kids wash their hands before they ate. I'm telling you, whenever my mom, the best food I ever had was food that my mom fed me from her hand. That, like, I don't know what it is about your mother's hand. When my mom would feed me, like, rice and meat and stuff, and she would grab it in her hand and feed me, it just tasted so good. And he, this guy's just being so judgmental. I ended up giving my kids forks for them to eat, which they didn't want to use, which made me even more frustrated with her because now they're used to this. It's not like she's giving them macaroni and cheese with her hand. She was using tortillas. Like, what? Lola has been really annoyed the rest of the day and wouldn't let me help her with lunch. And earlier, she was walking around the house speaking to someone, probably her sister, in Spanish about me. And I'm starting to feel a bit annoyed. So, am I the asshole? So, he puts an edit here. He says, I will add that the kids can use utensils and use them with foods like soups, pastas, etc. I just fear that allowing them to continue using their hands will make them used to it. 